Hello everyone and welcome back to round 14 of the F1 1998 career mode. Yes, this weekend we return for the German Grand Prix back at the Hockenheim ring. Yes, I know it says currently that we're heading to the Russi, uh, the Russi, the Russia and the Sochi Autodrom. Uh, but that is not happening, of course, because we have got the Hockenheim ring modded in to this game. Of course, if you missed out on the last video uh, that went live earlier on this week, I would highly recommend going back and checking it out. But just three races to go now of the campaign. And it is all still to play for uh, between Eddie Irvine and Mika Hakkinen. However... There is some big news as we head into this weekend. Both Eddie Irvine and John Lacy have announced that they will be retiring from Formula 1 at the end of the season. So this opens up a huge opportunity. You know, someone might try and get themselves into Ferrari. Someone, of course, as well is going to end up in that Sauber seat ready for next season. We've kind of been talking to a few teams behind the scenes. We've got a couple of offers uh, that could potentially be on the table in the very near future. But of course, all the focus at the moment for us is on these final three races. So let's do this thing ready at the Hockenheim ring. Um, we, we might not be able to qualify today then here at the Hockenheim ring. Uh, apparently, some of you were saying that, for example, uh, safety cars and things like that do actually work around this venue. But one shot qualifying definitely doesn't, unfortunately. Well, there we go then. Looks like everyone else was able to qualify, though. So it is going to be Damon Hill on the pole position then, ahead of Jacques Villeneuve, 1996 world champion, ahead of the 1997 world champion. Both McLarens line up P3 and P4 there. Ferrari, though, 13th and 14th place here on the grid. Um, but yeah, we're starting this one from the back. Quickly though, before we get into this video, I want to thank all of the names you see on your screen. Without their continued support of the channel, none of the work we do here would be possible. And if you want to get your name featured on this list, you can click the join button or click the Patreon link down in my description below and support the channel from just £1 a month. You will also get access to weekly updates about everything going on behind the scenes and also occasionally some early pre reviews on videos so yeah a massive thank you to my youtube members and my patreon supporters and let's get back to the video at the pinnacle of motorsport Joining us today to oversee all the thrills and spills, it's Anthony Davidson. And great to see you. How are you feeling about the race today? And how are the circuit conditions from what you've seen? Well, it's looking a bit cold out there, if I'm honest. These tyres have quite a narrow operating window in terms of the temperatures they need to extract the best grip. So with a cold track surface, it's going to be harder to keep those temperatures up, which will lead to lower grip and maybe more mistakes. Well, here we are then, trackside for the German Grand Prix. Of course, an unseasonally late German Grand Prix. Those of you that watched the race at the Nürburgring a couple of years ago, I think it was called the Eiffel Grand Prix. I will remember it was one of the coldest F1 races ever. So how we're going to get on today at a similar time of the year is anybody's guess. 27 laps ahead of us. Uh, so because obviously of the limitations of the mod, uh, this is actually probably going to be the shortest race we do all season uh, just because the lap times are a little bit lower here as well. But starting this one from the rear of the field, Eddie Irvine and she's taken a penalty. Five red lights. And it is going to be lights out. And away we go then. It's not going to be long uh, before Eddie Irvine gets the jump on me. Down in towards that first corner then. But yeah, now we actually get a first proper look uh, at this modded circuit. Obviously inside this game. And I must admit, it is great to see the Hockenheim ring back. One of the ones uh, that people desperately want to see return to Formula 1. It's all Eddie Irvine there. Had a bit of a look down the inside of a few cars. Ricardo Rossi and Mark Genet making a little bit of contact at the first couple of turns. So we'll claim the one place back then as we head up in towards the hairpin on lap one. But yeah, this track, see, so hosted the German Grand Prix, actually alternated uh, with the Nürburgring for quite a few years uh, in the 2010s. And then I think hosted its last race 
back in 2019 there, as I think we've got a bit of an incident down at the rear of the field. I think Janay there may be uh, getting in with Shinji Nakano off the start of the race, so not the ideal start for them. But yeah, a very, very mixed up grid here, but it certainly plays into David Coulthard uh, and Mika Hakkinen's hand there as Eddie Irvine way further down the order than they would have wanted here, but making our way through the final couple of turns of lap one. We've got yellows out there as we go through the iconic Saks curve. Unfortunately, uh, for most modern-day Formula 1 fans, only really remembered uh, for Sebastian Vettel's era. How have I already lost a gear here? Did I forget to change the gearbox after Monza? I guess I did. Uh, and immediately, we, we have gone and lost fourth. That is not the ideal way to start this afternoon there, as through turn one will go. Rosa struggling a little bit as Irvine and Verts, everyone trying to make moves. Whoa, down the inside of a couple more cars will go. Irvine, I think, has actually lost a bit of his front wing, uh, but he's still able to hang on quite well. So that's quite a big surprise, actually, then, by Eddie Irvine, as you can still see on the exits of the corners. has got plenty of straight line speed there. We're almost into the back of Alexander Verts up in towards the hairpin. And we've got a pile-up. Reduce your pace. I, I love that. We're well, running on board then with Heinz Howell Frentzen. He's got the other German, Michael Schumacher, alongside him. Gets way too hot and straight into the back of the Sauber car in front there. And I think, I think Michael Schumacher's actually got away with that one somehow. So both Ferraris may be getting away with that. I don't really know. Um, but now, now the craziness might begin. Well, I'm going to try and be a little bit cheeky then. We're going to dive into the pit lane at just the end of lap two here. They try and take... Whoa! The mediums to the end. I've, I would have definitely been out of the Grand Prix there. We have just cheated death around this venue then. But yeah, we're going to re-emerge at the rear of the field for the rest of the afternoon. But surely the mediums should be able to go to the rest of the race. We've already lost six runners. Once again, this series proving itself to be a race of attrition. Oh, we've got someone breaking down. Damon Hill, our pole sitter is broken down under the safety car in this race. So we're down to just 13 men, uh, and we're back into the points. Well, the next 60 seconds or so, we're basically going to decide whether we ever see the Hockenheim ring return in this series again, then. If the safety car goes through the bit lane and comes straight back out, uh, then, yeah, unfortunately, this will be the only race we ever do on this venue. So fingers crossed. Some of you did say in the comments it should be fine here, so I'm hoping... Uh, that is the case as we round our way out of the final corner then. I believe it is David Coulthard that is leading the way. No temperature in the tyres, but across the line will go. Shinji Nakano fancying his chances down the inside at Turn 1. Luckily, we've also got that fourth gear back. Um, but safety car is nowhere to be seen, so that's a good sign then. It's also a good sign is that... Well, actually, we've got Giancarlo Fisichella a little bit further behind. Um, but... Yeah, well, at least one of the back markers should score a point here because uh, there's only 13 cars running after just six laps. Oh, Ricardo Rossit is letting me by. Don't know what that was about. Clearly, Ricardo Rossit doesn't fancy a fight with me for the rest of the afternoon. He hasn't let anyone else through. He's not breaking down. He just decided to give the place up. Yep, Hacken and then leading the way for McLaren. I'm sure he'd love to get a win here himself some points over Eddie Irvine in the championship. David Coulthard though, surely if we get some craziness today, he will hope that he's still got a shot. We're getting yellow flags out in a few places still, not too sure what that's about. Is Irvine still with that front wing damage? He should have pit under safety car. He's just hitting the back of me. What is Eddie Irvine doing? Luckily we don't get a penalty for it. I do get a warning for the collision. But Eddie Irvine, yeah, just rammed into the back of me up the back straight. And we got a VSC now. Oh, Irvine's in. Irvine has finally decided to peel into the pit lane then. At the end of lap 7. Only 20 laps to go already, but we're up into P8. Well, the AI definitely struggling through some of the slower speed stuff around this venue. Sacks curve. Uh, we are gaining a lot of time. On Jean Alesi, of course, announced his retirement coming into this weekend. So, yeah, a very storied F1 career will come to an end. But can we get past him today? He has got a penalty, so not under too much pressure. Oh, we got AI in. They are so slow off that final corners. 
Uh, when they're trying to dive into the pit lane there. But Elise, Magnussen and Jack Villeneuve all diving in as well as Mika Hakkinen. Luckily, doesn't look like we're going to find the safety car again. So at least that does work around this venue. As Barrichello, everyone seems to be picking up five second penalties today. But we are up at a P4. Often when you think of Schumacher and Barrichello, it's not these two that you think of. But they are battling each other out on track at the moment. As both of them will peel into the pit lane as well as David Coulthard. So we have gone... From the back of the field to the front now, in just 11 laps. Uh, however, we want to try and go to the end on this set of tyres. Vizikela, Nakano, Gene. I've got no idea what they're planning. There we go, Mika and a new fast lap of the day. So the AI, though, running less than a second a lap faster than me here. There might genuinely be a shot. The AI just really, really struggling. Okay, yeah, uh, McLaren are still rapid. <laughs> David Goldbard, one and a half seconds clear of me that time round. Hackenden is already now showing back up on my relative. Uh, so I think a shot at the win today is unlikely. I guess the real question for us actually is how quickly will Hackenden get around the likes of Genet and Nakano? But it's David Goldbard that seems to be the quicker of the McLarens today. So it might end up being that all three of us converge on each other. Uh, uh, don't go over there. Don't go over there. <laughs> That's a warning for corner cutting, apparently. Well, Hakkinen now, for whatever reason, has picked up 10 seconds worth of penalties, so I don't know if there's some chicanery going on uh, with the yellow flag still that appear just to crop up around a few places on the lap. Um, but I have no idea what's going on with David Coulthard. Or how much longer the likes of Fisichella, Nakano, and Janae intend on staying out here. Coulthard's moved up into second then. Uh, sorry, into fifth place. Uh, so he is still going to be one to watch towards the end. Oh, we've lost someone else. Who has dropped out of the Grand Prix now? Jack Villeneuve then. Car appears to be stuck in first gear. So a very, very odd issue there for Jack Villeneuve. But he is the next casualty out of this Grand Prix then. And a heartbreak for the 97 world champion. Well, at the moment, for me, then, I'm just hoping that Jeanne, Nakano, and Fisichella stay out here as long as possible. Coulthard seems to have finally picked up the move on the first of the Menardis, but it's really slowing him down. Oh, I think Coulthard's made the move work on Nakano. Jeanne as well losing out to the other McLaren. So Hakkinen then is really struggling to make progress here. But Coulthard, there is still going to be a fight towards the finish of this race. Oh, no. Late on in the day, we have got the gearbox fault. This is not good. So now all of our shift times are massively delayed there. Whoa! Fisichella is going to go past me. And just as we were starting to think we might have a chance against David Coulthard, as Eddie Irvine now moves up into P5. This is going to put us really on the back foot. And you can see Coulthard in the space of a handful of corners has just absolutely taken that gap down. When is Fisichella and Nakano going to pit? And will this gearbox get better again? Look at that Coulthard, cool new fast lap of the day. We're running about seven seconds off the pace now. I can't do anything. It just, it will shift up like five seconds too late. And now David Coulthard, he's about to fly past me late on in the afternoon. Reliability dogs so many people this season. And it looks like today, we are going to be the one that unfortunately pays the price here. Is it going to work? It's working again. Wonderful. Coulthard's already gone through. But now the gearbox decides it's going to work as it should. I genuinely don't think Fisichella needs to pit here. I think him and Shinji Nakano are going to the end of this race. Six laps to go now. Oh, there we go. Irvine's in. No idea why Eddie Irvine needs to pit again. But clearly not happy with something. And that might be a huge implications on the championship. Hacking and back up at a P5. But he's got 15 seconds worth of penalties. Oh, David Coulthard, he's not giving up on this race, though. Surely McLaren... I mean, they would know if Fisichella hasn't pit or not. Surely. But Coulthard is still hunting him down. We're just four laps to go with this Grand Prix. We might have the best seat in the house for a late race battle. Three laps to go and the gap between our top two. Less than a second. Coulthard, another new fastest lap. We're just trying to hang on as close-ish as we can. And if anything happens, we've got to be there to pick up the pieces. Oh, there we go. I think Fisichella has just let David Coulthard by then. Clearly not interested in the fight for the lead. So there we go. That ruins our dramatic title. Um, but yeah, Fisichella now down to P2. David Coulthard 
This could be a critical victory here. With Irvine and Hakkinen both way down the order, has he now got a lifeline to get back in the title fight? Didn't I start? I, I'm on the hearts. What? Okay. We we might be in big trouble then. We've got to pit again before the end of this race. I've had no warning prior to now. But suddenly our podium hopes might be evaporating. We might be about to get disqualified here. Because I haven't used the correct tyres. Even though I thought I had. Sun finally has decided to shine then. With just over one lap to go here from the Hockenheim ring. And David Coulthard... Looks in control of this one at the front. Will anyone else have to pit as we head into the final lap of the Grand Prix? I've still got no idea what's going on with Fisichella, but where are we going to re-emerge? No, Fisichella's staying out there. So he's clearly done something with those ties. I must have lost track of what he has done, but into the pit lane we go. Careful not to get done for speeding here. Hakkinen's got 20 seconds of penalties. Nakano's got a 5 second penalty. We might not be out of this for a podium here. We've got to make sure we don't get disqualified now. Exit. As I've made the stop, we've switched over. But we're already on lap 27, though. So Hakkinen's going to go through. Nakano's probably going to go through as well. All we need to do... Surely all we now need to do is just make sure that we're close enough to Nakano here. And the podium is still going to be ours. This has got to be... One of the weirdest races we've had in this game. And I don't know whether we should keep the Hockenheim ring in this series. Uh, ready for next season. It's definitely less broken than Malaysia. Um, but to say it is perfect is certainly, you know, a gross Caution. understatement. Caution. That being said though, to be able to mod an entire Formula 1 track back into the game. Is just absolutely incredible. And, you know, although we have a bit of fun with it. Uh, with all this, you know, the work that Geki has done to put tracks like this back in the game is nothing short of incredible here. But making our way in towards the final few corners then of the German Grand Prix, David Coulthard is suddenly going to launch himself back into championship contention here. Giancarlo Fisichella, a fantastic race strategy by the Italian, will bring him home with a PB of the season there, I believe, with P2. We're going to be P5 on the road, but I think we're still going to get a podium when all is said and done here. Rounding our way through the final corner. It's P5, but is it actually P3? Yes, it is. A great race then, and a fantastic win here in Sochi. Talk to me, Ants. What was it that set them apart from the competition today? Well, the safety car completely changed the race, didn't it? It's hard to say exactly what would have happened without it, but there's no question that they came out of that situation in a good position. After an excellent performance at the Grand Prix, I'm sure there'll be plenty of celebrations tonight amongst the Mercedes team, and they certainly deserve it. Well, there we are then, the end of the German Grand Prix. And David Coulthard from third on the grid kept his cool and will take a comfortable victory there. Giancarlo Fisichella, definitely my driver of the day, though. But for us, a little bit unlucky uh, in the end, but I don't think we were going to get past Giancarlo. Uh, Shinji Nakano, though, as well. A huge point all for him and Minardi there, although I think they are confined to P10 in the Constructors' Championship. Schumacher beats out Magnussen. Hakkinen in seventh there ahead of Barrichello and Irvine uh, with Jean Alesi, our final point scorer then. So a huge dip in form by Hakkinen and in Irvine, but more importantly the Michael Schumacher back-to-back -back DNFs there. The Ferrari driver joins Alexander Wurtz, Pedro De La Rosa, Jos Verstappen, Herbert, Frentzen Hill and Jack Villeneuve who all fail to see the chequered flag and that means taking a look at our championship standings. Irvine now with a nine-point lead over Mika Hakkinen with just two races to go of the season. However, Schumacher and Coulthard, they can both get back in the title fight if they have a good result next time out in Japan. We jump Ralph Schumacher up into seventh place there. We could finish... Well, I mean, 
you'd say Giancarlo Fisichella actually uh, has been best of the rest of this season. But behind him, we could still finish sixth place here if we score some good points in the final couple of races of the campaign as well. And yeah, with that result for Shinji Nakado, it just means that Mark Cheney is the only driver now not to score double-digit points before the end of the season. Constructors-wise, uh, we are still now tied with Stewart once again. Four points back behind Sauber as we head into the penultimate round of the season there. Williams and Jordan, just one point between them as well. And four points between Ferrari and McLaren. So there is still a lot to play for as we head to Suzuka next time out. But thank you all so much for watching. If you have enjoyed, please do make sure to leave a like. Get yourself subscribed. And yeah, we'll return very soon for the Japanese Grand Prix.